Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the broadcast. I'm your host, Josh Reeves. It's Wednesday, August 7th, 2019. Welcome to another show. We're, we're going to be getting into a lot of different stuff. We're here tonight, uh, various news and some other information I want to talk about with you. So we will be getting right into it. I, uh, I've been working on some serious shit. This, uh, oh man, you know, it always, it fucking always happens this way. Uh, I mean, I'm glad it does, but it's a, it, it's crazy. It's wild. I got, uh, I think having a week with no air conditioner. And then I followed that up right after it got fixed with our fundraising week. And I just wore myself out that week. I didn't get the proper rest because you you don't really notice at the time it's not until afterwards i realized how many it was like i wasn't when i didn't have ac that week i wasn't eating very much and uh my appetite just wasn't right when it, when you're hot like that you just don't want to eat you know you're not hungry at all so i didn't eat much and i was really run down and then i didn't take any recovery time i just jumped right back in because you know once you're once you're unable to work and do stuff for a week, you, you know, you're ready to get right back into it. And, uh, and then when we had our fundraising week, it came <clears throat> way down to the wire yet again, <clears throat> excuse me, as it always does, uh, really burst this time. And so I didn't, I didn't sleep or eat for well over 24 hours. It was almost, it was almost, it was like a day and a half. Cause I was trying not to spend any money just so I could, uh, you know, I didn't buy food or didn't get anything to eat or anything. I just was trying to make sure I had every penny in there that we needed to, to be able to stay alive. So, and we did do that. And thank you again to everybody who did contribute. But um, I fucked myself over. <laughs> it was a combined, I think, with the week before when I was, I had no AC for a week and the, you know, hot air. You ever been to Texas in July? You can imagine being in texas in july with no air conditioner for a week it's not fun and uh so yeah then i, I just wasn't feeling good I, my throat was fucked up and i felt run down i felt like i had fucking mono or something you've been fucking making out behind the fucking bleachers in gym class again or something uh it just fucking felt run. i just was done and my body was like eh, meh, no more but in the middle of all this, I was uncovering uh, fucking more bombshell information. I mean, my uh, this has never happened. <laughs> I got to tell you, man, this has never happened in all my years of research. Um, well, yeah, that's not necessarily true. It happens, but then once you absorb the information, and then once you have a command of the information, then it just becomes a you know part of your knowledge, basically like anything else. But it's very similar. I feel almost exactly s similar to how I found, felt when I first found out about the CMP stuff, paradigm shifting stuff. So we have to or literally changes every, every, everything you view the world, but makes it more crystal clear. So anyway, I've got a new video coming for you guys. Um, it'll be ready sometime this week. Please don't rush me. I'm like, when's it coming? To the, it's going to be coming. It's gonna, you got to understand, I'm, this is all new information. This is all new stuff. I'm just now wrapping my mind around it. And um, so I'm trying to put it all together to present it the best way I can in a video that I'll have uh, done sometime this week. But uh, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me. I'm still kind of getting over this crap. I am feeling better, though, so thank you to everybody out there that sent me messages and asked me how I was feeling. I appreciate that. I appreciate all you guys asking. Um, you know, I, I it, it, like I said, it happens. It happens all the time, but it's happened yet again, folks, where this stuff that I put in my most recent videos that I put out, the stuff with the Naomi Campbell's birthday party and all that, and the stuff pertaining to Vlaslav Doronin, and uh, I, again, I've done it again, and I've cracked something here way bigger than I anticipated. 
And I mean something that, that explains our current political climate 100%. It's like once you know this and you see this, you're like, oh, my God. This is what's been going on with all this stuff. Everything makes sense now. I want to give a shout out and thanks to uh, John Brisson. JB. Um, I, I, you know, I, when I first started covering that stuff with the, uh, cause I know what John's into John, you know, John's a researcher stuff on his own. He, uh, I know, you know, I know the stuff he's into, he knows what I'm into. So if he finds something that he knows is like fucking in my wheelhouse, he'll throw it to me. Same thing, you know, same thing with me. I see something I think is, so when I first started finding out about this, uh, Vladislav Daron and stuff, and then I found the connection. I mean, it, it started happening like within five minutes after I finished that video, Naomi you know, Campbell's birthday party put it up. I'm not kidding you. Within five minutes, I started finding other stuff that I, I should have had in the video. Most notably, the one I told about uh, that guy, Mark Rich. So I didn't even find that. I didn't even know about that when I put together that video. And then I found the connection to Mark Rich to, I mean, he was, he was Vladislav Doronin's mentor, man. He's the guy that got him in the game. And you go research Mark Rich, you can see, you know, that's a rabbit hole in and of itself. And uh, Bill Clinton pardoned him and all that stuff. And you can go look at all the stuff he's involved with. But that was huge. It was a huge connection. So I was like, yeah, I know John, John Brisson, he's going to fucking eat this shit up, you know. So he started looking into that shit as soon as he saw my video. And he started doing exactly what I, I do and, and would do in that situation where, you know, you take the key names and you go start looking, looking on your own. And then he finds a bunch of shit and sends it to me. And it was kind of, because, uh, I mean, listen, I know how it is. This is not a put down. I know how it is. When you're, when you're researching, dude, it's just scattershot. You're just fucking, you're grabbing whatever you can find. And then you're, you know, piece of the cake. So he's just throwing me shit. And at first I was overwhelmed. I was like, what the fuck? Um, but then I took that shit that he found and I found fucking 10,000 other things he didn't find. That's a real collaborative research right there. So they, thank you. Thank you, John. I appreciate your support and, uh, uh you know, your contribution to, to, to what I'm doing. Um, he always gives me shout outs on shows he goes on and also, uh, contri actually contributes and donates. Uh, so imagine that there's, he, he's a researcher and he's contributed, contributing to me. So what, what does that say about, uh, about him? You know, so the, uh, I, I, he was kind of going one way with it and I saw where he was going, but something didn't make sense. And then I started, I started putting all this other stuff together. It's, it's, it, I, I'm, I'm blown. I'm blown out, man. I'm fucking, whew. I, what I was going to say is being the broadcast is probably just never happened before. I'm, I'm reached. I'm literally le reaching <laughs> like the fucking event horizon of my intellect. I'm not kidding you. I've never felt that way. I, I, <laughs> I have, you know, I've wrapped my mind around some pretty heady, concepts and things through the years of researching and none of it's been a problem for me i gotta tell you this it was just it, it, it's 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 astounding this is huge so this is why it's, i'm taking a little extra time to do this and do this right get this this is one of those things that's gotta it's, this has got to get done and get out now you know i don't have time to fuck around and make a big involved film about this so i'm just going to make these little videos and throw them up on YouTube and continue to concentrate on uh, the other job at hand that I'm working on, which is Spellcasters 2 and 3. So, but this stuff, uh, listen, it's all, like I've said before, it's all relevant. But when I find stuff like this, just like I found with the other stuff with the uh, the nine hour, five part Mystery Hollywood series, you know, it's, it's got to come out. But this is. Uh, it's just crazy that all those elements that I found that are all in that first video, the uh, Naomi Campbell's birthday party video. And again, that came to me, all of that came to me in a real weird scattershot way. It was just it was all coincidence. I watched, you know, I was doing the yard war stuff. I found that 
Vanilla Ice clip where he's asking him about Naomi Campbell's birthday party. And then I'm randomly watching some Joey Diaz video and I hear him mention Joe Rogan going to Naomi Campbell's birthday party and and then it just there go there it goes. I'm off to the races. And uh God damn man. I'm gonna give you some of this now. Um it's not going to ruin anything for the video or anything, but I mean, I've got to, I got to put, some, I got to give you some of this now. Um, the video really thing is, is just important for me to collate all this as fast as possible while it's still hot, while I'm still finding it and, uh, you know, just get a video out now. And if we need to expand upon that later with additional videos, because I know we're going to find way, 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 way more on this, then I'll do that. But, um, man, I mean, this really explains everything, everything that we've been seeing, happen uh it's it's unbelievable from uh the you know the the intentionally botched Mueller probe investigation whatever they're calling it to the harvey weinstein stuff to the uh Robert Kraft getting it, getting it, getting tugged out, and that basically going poof in the wind. And yet we see the wine, see stuff happen. Then we see R. Kelly, and then we see with the Epstein stuff. But this guy, uh, Vlad, Vladislav Doronin, got it. This really enabled me to find. A bunch of other stuff and that article that we read on on um an article i read on the previous show which a lot of you took and found a lot more stuff on when i was talking about the private remember i was talking about this his private security firm graps too and all that some of the stuff that i found that uh that john had, had, had found was definitely you know john was you know was definitely pointing in the direction of being connected to trump and stuff but then i found other stuff that negates that but show uh, it's crazy it's two different factions basically you've got two different factions of organized crime in russia and it's very easy to from the appearance of stuff when you do research on this and look into it, it's very easy at first to think it's all one big organized crime thing it isn't it's two separate factions you got one faction, and I've seen, listen, I've already seen glimpses of this, and I've talked about this on the show through the years, but this ties together all of it, and it even ties together my CMP, so all, it's just, it's incredible. So you, you've got this, and what's even more incredible about it is how is 98% of the population, maybe more, doesn't have any idea about this. And this has got to get out to people, man. I, I've got to get, I've got to do whatever I can to get this most current, current information I'm going to have in this video out to people because this is game changing. This is paradigm shifting. We need to get major traction with this information. Listen, you wait, essentially what you've got is you've got two factions of organized crime in Russia that make that between them make up a good chunk of the, of, of, the world billionaires and trillionaires. These guys. So the the article that I read on a previous show about the shootout, remember that happened in 2017, 2016, 2017 it happened and between uh, Vladislav Doronin and his team and uh, a security team that was connected to this other gentleman named um. Oh, where's his name? Give me a second. You got to give me a second here. I had all this stuff up. Where is it at? Gavril Yush, uh, Gavril Yushvevev, Yushvevev. So it, at this at this tower, okay, it's called Oko Tower in Russia. And so the shootout happened between 
Naomi Campbell's ex-boyfriend, Vladislav Doronin, his security team, which is made up of these private security, basically like his own little Blackwater, and then this other team that belonged to Gavril Yusvevev, that, as I talked about, were made up of former, current former MMA fighters. And I talked about, oh, see, there's a connection to the whole Joe Rogan thing, you know. And that definitely plays more into this, too. I got more of with that connection to Rogan, I'm going to point out to you. That's crazy. And again, I found him by total accident over the weekend. That's fucking crazy. This is just mind blowing. So, um, some of the, so you had this shootout, right? And what's interesting is, is that when you look into this tower, this hap- that happened, the Oko Tower, all the, all the information that you find online just basically says it was a joint venture, business venture between Gavril Yushvevev and uh, Vladislav Doronin. Like even here, Wikipedia, it says... In 2016, you should have invested $300 million in a real estate project organized by Vladislav Doronin. The developments include an 85-story office block, shopping center, and parking space for nearly 4,000 cars. You can go and check. The, you should go look this place up. Go type Oko Tower and look it up. These are, hey, this is not just some well, office block. This is the two now the two tallest twin tower buildings the tallest buildings in Russia, period. So why did, did these two guys, why was there a skirmish between the security teams? Because they, everything they want to make you believe is that these guys are business partners and they're all good together. This is not the case. The only reason <laughs> that Vladislav Doronin is in bed with Yushevev on this deal is because Yushevev is a part of this organized crime family, a mafia family, Russian mafia, that are the oldest and most powerful Russian mafia there is. These guys have been running shit in Russia since the early 20th century, maybe even before. These guys are the real deal, big boy, Russian oligarch, powerful people, that control Russia, that control Putin. And surprise, 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 these are the guys that Trump is in bed with. But they're only one faction of it. Now, again, what they want you to believe here is that Vladislav Doronin and Gabriel Yushvayev are partners because they're both invested in, in, this, in this office project. Right? This is not the case. The only reason that Vladislav Doronin is, is, had to partner with Gavril Yushvayev on this is because the organized crime faction that Gavril Yushvayev is involved with, in the family he's involved with, this specific block that this is on, a prime real estate, they own. <laughs> they own it. You can't do jack shit. See, Vladislav Doronin, and Doronin, 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 okay, there we go. I, I, I'm very bad trying to pronounce these Russian names. Um, Vladislav Doronin could not get that real estate deal and could not build a building on that block without not just the approval, but the involvement and business partnering with, with a member of this crime organization, Mafia, Russian mafia that, again, is also connected to Trump. Vlaslav Doronin is himself obviously clearly involved in organized crime. But the thing is, I know the family name. I'm not going to say it. It's long and Russian, and I'd butcher it. It'll be in the video. Uh, but this organized crime, again, so it appears that Vlaslav and, and Gavril would be, are in bed together. They're both, no, 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 no. Vlasov Doronin is involved with some other Russian organized crime, um, uh, clearly be a competing sig- syndicate. And that's not unusual. It's certainly not unusual in mafia stuff. It's not unusual in organized crime. 
It's been going on for centuries. What's interesting about this is that the this old school Russian oligarch mafia family that Gavel Yusheviv is connected with the old, old, old powerful people is uh, by all accounts, this is, they, they are a, the more, they're, they're right wing. I mean, they are old school, right wing Russians and they're, they're connected out the wazoo. I mean, Jared Kushner's connected to them. They're connected to, uh, basically all the Eastern European Ashkenazis. That's basically who they're involved with. This other line, and they're definitely more right wing. This other line that, that Vlasov Daron is involved with is a left wing, more uh, what you would consider, you know, pre end of the Cold War era Russia. Now, don't again, now don't get this confused because both of these factions did exist. But people have it's, it's very hard for people, especially people who from the West, like myself, who've been propagandized you know, for what we're this, this uh, sort of perception we're supposed to have on Russia. It's very hard for people to wrap their minds around the fact that they have left and right over there, even in a communist dictatorship and even in a country like Russia, even for decades, just like here, there has been left wing versus right wing. And even though it may all be under the guise of communism, there are still factions, political factions within those individual countries. And I don't I think people, a lot of people don't either don't know that or don't realize that. And, and I, I certainly really, I, I had a little bit of an idea of it, but not, nothing like what I have now. It's interesting because I can't seem to put a name on or find who this other faction is, but they're there. That, the more left-wing faction. And, and I, I just continue to find, once I got onto this, I just con- continue to find data to back it up. Um, so you've, you've got this right-wing end that Gavel Yusheviv is uh, involved in. Only way that building gets built by Vladislav Daron is if he partners with him. But these guys are not buddies; they're not friends, and they do not work for the same people and aren't for the same faction. And this came to a head with this uh, shootout. And I found a follow-up to the to, for the case for that shootout, and it's fascinating. They changed the narrative. I mean, you just it, you just read this, and it just reeks. You can smell the corruption. You can actually physically experience the corruption just by reading this follow-up into that shooting that happened at that, and it's just more confirmation. That's why that that shootout, that's why that's big news and why that's a big story and why that was a big clue, because it clearly shows for the first time it's the first piece of evidence that proves that guys like Vladislav Daron and there are guys like him who are not in the same criminal organization's as guys like Gavel Yusheviv, and they are opposing forces. And this opposing force of this more right-wing Russian mafia is trying to... They're, they're, they're at war with this other side. And they have... <coughs> they have now infiltrated the highest powers on both sides of the political spectrum to such a degree that this is why this real severe <clears throat> left-right paradigm war stuff has escalated since Obama went in office in 2008. Because what's actually going on here are the most high, I don't know any other way to say this, though, I mean, the most high and powerful oligarchs that are running these Russian, these opposing Russian crime syndicates, these guys have gained, amassed such power on both sides that they are now able to affect the political spectrum of the United States. And this is why the Mueller probe was intentionally botched. Just like, remember what I told you when the Mueller probe first broke out? And I told you they weren't, shit, they weren't going to find shit even if there was stuff in there and they weren't ever going to come out with it and they were going to redact it. I mean, I predicted it to a T. The reason I knew that is because I knew that what they were going to find when they really deep, dug deep into this is exactly what I found, which is left, right, Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. These guys are all in bed with Russia. 
But what they don't want you to find now, which is what I found out now, is that you have high-level political involved mo- Russian mafia that are on the left wing, on the right wing, and they are at war, and they are now using the, the political operatives within the United States that they control through business agreements to wage this war. And this is exactly why, remember when, when it, before the election in 2008, everybody was sure it was going to be Hillary, and, and all of a sudden here comes this, this senator out of uh, uh, Illinois. I was like, huh? Nobody, nobody predicted that. Why do you think he came out, of, all of a sudden, here comes Barack Obama, and he comes out, because he, he's controlled and connected to these guys, too, through the Chicago Mafia, because he, this left-wing side of the Russian mafia that Vlad Salteronin is connected to is heavily involved in Chicago, specifically in politics. And then, of course, that's why they put their boy in there at mayor and uh, Rahm Emanuel, former uh, Israeli soldier. Well, I mean, everybody, if, you, if you're from Israel, you're a soldier, you have to, you have to serve. Fucking uh, Dr. Ruth, West, let's, let's talk. You know, talk. Whatever she said her catchphrase was, she was a fucking Israeli sniper. That's true. You can look that up. So, again, they th- this another thing too is that I think it's twisted. People tend to talk about the Clintons, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, as one one brain. You know what I mean? Two entities that share a brain that don't have the same political ideologies, and this is not the truth. I've been talking about this for years. A lot of people have known this for years, but Hillary is way, always has been, is way more powerful and connected than Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was truly a stooge. He wasn't running shit. But during the course of his years in politics, he got involved with this left-wing side of the Russian mafia. Hillary, however, is not. She is not connected to that stuff. That's why they didn't let her have the nomination when, uh, either times, 2008 or 2012. These, these right-wing versus left-wing guys in Russian politics, they are, they are involved in fighting a war and we're all involved in it, and we didn't even know. That's what all of this stuff has been about. I, it, it's insane. This is why you had these right, this, this right-wing faction that uh, Gabriel Yushevov is involved with. I'll, I'll, I've got charts. I've got, I mean, I've got all the connections. I'll, I'll have all this stuff in the video. I'm just giving you an overview now. Um, these guys, this is, these are the guys that, that made sure Hillary Clinton wasn't in there. They would have took eight more years of Bill Clinton over having her in there for one year. They controlled Bill. This is apparent through the connection to uh, Vlasov Doronin and to Mark Rich. Mark Rich was his mentor. Bill Clinton pardoned him. He's on Epstein's Lolita Express. And then you see the, the stuff with Trump, and you see that he was once with these guys. Remember, remember when Trump it really seemed for the longest time like Trump was a liberal? And at some point, all of a sudden, he switched right around the time that Obama got elected. Remember that? And he used to be friends with Epstein, and then they weren't friends anymore. That's because these guys basically, well, they the the Russian mafia bailed out. I mean, they bailed out Trump. I don't know how many times on both sides. But see, he was in Trump used to be in on the more left wing side with the Russian mafia. That's why he was connected to Epstein and connected to all these guys. He flipped. 
he was going out of business. This other right wing side. This is before he got elected. Before he's running for president. Any of that. They bailed him out. He's he was doing deals with uh, oh with all those guys. I mean, you can just look up. You know his name. Gavril Yushevov, you can look up Gavril Yushevov, Gavril, G-A-V-R-I-L, Yushevov, Y-U-S-H-V-A-E-V. You can look look up their names together and you'll find the the connections. They bailed him, they, they, he saved his fucking ass. He was indebted to them, they got him, they Got him in there. And now everything he's been doing, that's why all this stuff, why do you think all of this stuff has been happening now? See, both of these guys, both of these factions, the left wing and these right wing factions, don't get them wrong. There's not one better than the other. The, the left wing was that Vladislav Daron is involved. Those guys are involved in child traffic, uh, you know, sex trafficking and all that stuff as well. They're all involved in the same stuff. But that's why they're in competition with each other. Those guys are up to all the same stuff. But now this right-wing faction of, of Russian organized crime through Trump is trying to shut down the same activities that this left-wing Russian mafia that Vladislav Doronin is connected to. They're trying to put them out of business. This is why they went after Epstein. And why this happened under Trump. This is not coincidence. This is not timing. This is the right wing Russian mafia exerting their control over Trump and the administration to shut down their competition. It's plain and simple. And I found all these other pictures. You, know, you notice how the left wing side guys are all connected to the big Hollywood peeps. And why there's all of a sudden they're going against Hollywood. And all of a sudden there's been, especially since Trump has been office this big, all of a sudden there's a lot of anti-Hollywood stuff going on. These are the guys and a lot of these political operatives within the left wing that are in Hollywood. I found all these pictures, man. I'm just going to come out and say it. I, you ain't going to find this shit on Google. I had to go- look at, at other fucking sources and search engines other than Google to find this shit, man, uh, it's fucking crazy because I talked about this stuff with Quentin Tarantino, you know, recently, man, God, it all makes sense now. That, uh, now we know why they went after Weinstein, why he was getting away with it for years, why, why all of a sudden? We know about him and, you know, his connection to Quentin, of course, we made all of Quentin's films up to the point in which he got exposed. But guess who happens to be huge? I'm talking about in a weird way. BFFs, Vladislav Doronin and Leonardo DiCaprio. And I found a bunch of really weird pictures with them together, where like stuff where they're like, he's just touching Leo's face in a very strange way. I found another picture uh, with Leo standing between Naomi Campbell and Vladislav Doronin. Um, a bunch of ones where they're on like yachts with um, very, very young women standing around. I'm not saying illegal women, but you know, 18, 19, and it's widely known. Leo likes the, the, the young women. I mean, that's not a fucking secret. But just one where, and, and, and let's have drone standing there, and Leo's kind of by him. And he's, let's have drone's got his shirt off, and there's like a 19 year old fucking chick in a bikini standing over there. And this other weird one where he's like t- touching his face in a weird way. And then it all started to hit. It, it all started to dawn on me, you know. And there's another picture where it, it's uh, Leonardo DiCaprio sitting down at a table. Like at a gala function or something. And sitting next to him smiling is Sean Penn. And behind, staying behind them is Laszlo Duron and he's got his arm on Leo's neck, clutching him and his hands on Sean Penn's back and he's smiling. Like, oh, now, I mean, I've known Sean Penn. I've heard he was a CIA for years. and Everybody knows he's a commie. 
But I saw this picture and went, oh, man, this all makes sense to me. Now we know why DiCaprio was big into all the, you know, global warming environmentalist stuff. I was like, holy fucking shit, man. This is all making sense to me now. The the left-wing faction is the faction that's involved with the Hollywood types with trying to push their agendas, which all serve the same purpose. Man, uh, I mean, this. Uh, well, as soon as I started seeing these pictures, I was like, oh, holy shit. This, this is starting to explain it. There was a UFC event over the weekend. It wasn't one of their normal UFC events, like where they're numbered, like UFC 2, whatever, 200, whatever, but it was some kind of, because uh, I guess they're, they have a deal with ESPN now, so it was some kind of special. It was called UFC on ESPN. It was over the weekend. And uh, I saw a news story on Friday uh, uh, before the fight about one of the fighters that was going to be fighting over the weekend named Colby Covington. And uh, it was making a big thing because he wears the MAGA hat and he's very vocal about loving Trump. I've, I've heard from stuff that I saw in interviews. Of, I've heard he's that some people are saying he's, it's just like a, an act like he's kind of like a kind of doing a WWE thing. And it did kind of seem like that during the fight at the end. I don't know, but he's the only UFC fighter who has ever been to the white house. And he went to the white house and met Trump and he wears a MAGA hat and, uh, he's in UFC and yeah, I guess it was a co-main event or whatever his fight was on Saturday. And so I saw the stories about him, you know, being Trump lover and all that. And then they show, they cut to the audience and they show who's there, the Trump, Trump sons. They're there. Front row, cheering him on. Well, guess who was conspicuously absent from this UFC event? Mr. Joe Rogan. Now, this is interesting. That's when it dawned on me. Oh, see? Then it all started making sense to me. Oh, okay. Now I get it. All this other, this other data and facts I'd had that didn't make sense to me start all came together and I started to make sense about it. Joe Rogan's connected to this le- more left-wing faction, the more Hollywood-connected faction, left-wing faction of these organized crime guys. They're all involved in the UFC. All of them are. And This explains why he's at the blast lob droning in party with, uh, you know, with Chappelle. Might even go to, uh, far to explain some stuff, with Shel- possibly even Chappelle being involved with that group. But then I found out that Dana White that owns the UFC, he, him and Trump are good buddies, which I didn't know. And see, Dana White's the guy that first brought Joe, Joe Rogan into the UFC way back when, back when, when it was nothing, really. It wasn't that popular. It wasn't that big, not as it is now. And uh, I've heard Joe say on his, on his show before that he's not, he does not have a contract with UFC. And it kind of doesn't make sense, does it? He said, no, I, don't, I actually don't have a contract with him. I, I want that. I'm actually a, a contract a, a agent. That's what he said. So basically, like they pay him, you know, a set fee for each performance, but he doesn't have. Now, why wouldn't why wouldn't somebody why wouldn't Joe Rogan have a, a big contract with the UFC? It just doesn't make any sense. And you never and he always he's you know he never talks any trash about Dana White. He always watches what he says about him. But. Uh, Clearly, you know, he's connected to this other more left-wing uh, faction. Well, Dana White, again, really good friends with Trump. And, uh, again, that's why you see him watching what he says. I always wondered about that. Well, Kobe Covington comes to fight on Saturday. The Trump kids are out there cheering him on. I'm going to, and then Rogan's not there. I'm going, oh, okay. 
We're going to skip this one, huh? That kind of seems kind of weird to me. And then they they go to the corner. They go to Colby Covington. I mean, he, this this guy's a Marine. He's supposed to be Mister All American. The Trump guys are there. We're all being told there's nothing to this Trump connection. And then they, this I mean, literally, I was died. This I was like motherfucker. They go to Kobe Covington in his corner. They, they like when they're fighting, they'll go to the corner, right, and they'll have the camera and the audio, the mics will be on. And they'll, you know, it's between rounds. You know, you've seen boxing and stuff. Between rounds, the, the coaches are talking to them. All right, you know, drop your left and, and pace that right hook, you know, whatever he's talking to him, telling him hints or whatever. And you hear the guy talking to Mr. Kobe Covington, Mr. All-American MAGA hat where, you know, I'm a Marine, salt to earth. And you hear his fucking trainer, his, his head coach guy talking to him. And the guy is a full-blown Rusky. You can hear the Russian accent. I like motherfucker. This all makes sense to me now. This all makes sense to me now. You know, it's just like I remember when I in the tail end when I was in the 9/11 Truth movement, people were saying, "Oh, Russia, Russia started playing 9/11 Truth movies," and I was like, "Huh?" That's why you had Russia today. It's connected to that right wing old school. That's why these guys have been pushing conspiracy theories. That's why you've got that Tulsi Gabbard that I talked about. Guarantee you she's connected to that left wing Russian faction that Rogan's connected to. These guys are waging war between these two factions, and they're and the, the we the general public are just think it's just everyday life. Hey, no, that's not what's going on here. And this Vladislav Deronin thing has really unlocked. Uh, it just makes so much sense now. Now you can see why all of this stuff is had, whether it's on the left or the right, this is not just political d- divide and conquer anymore. These are factions who are trying to, like, like I told you, when the, when, the, you know, when the Mueller thing first blew off, we weren't going to find shit because whatever they're going to find, they're going to end up finding that when it comes to Russia... Both sides of the political spectrum in the United States are in bed with them. And they ain't going to let that get out because that'll blow the whole thing wide open to the American public and the public at large of the world, and that's what they're trying to not do. These guys, now it makes total sense why that security team had MMA fighters on it and why they were opposed to the ones that were in Vladislav Doronin's group. One of these groups is vying for total control. God, it all makes sense now. That's why you, I, I, you know, why I'd found all these connections on the right wing side of it when I was doing my CMP research. I found, I, you know, I found all those connections, Larry McDonald and all that stuff, and he, he's going back and forth and reporting back to Russia and all these connections you find, and you know, Ronald Reagan, he's going around and he's the head of the Screen Actors Guild, very prestigious position but that's if you're the if you're the if you are the head of the screen actors Guild, you are essentially the king of hollywood at least in in i don't know if it's so much that now that way anymore uh, certainly probably to a certain degree it is but back then in those days in the heydays it was certainly like that and ronald reagan was going around dropping dime on motherfuckers to the government he was a snitch to the government Snitching on people that were suspected to be communists and dropping dime on them and turning them in. Meanwhile, he was a commie himself. Why do you think he got the nickname Red Ronnie? That's why. See, this has been going on for decades, folks. We've all been suckers to it. We, we, we bought into it when they told us the Cold War was going on bullshit. It's political subterfuge. Just like it is now when the new saber rattling they're doing with us and Russia and saying, oh, we're at odds at Russia and nuclear, this and that. No, 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 no. Horseshit. It's all horseshit. It's just to make the appearance that we're opposed with Russia when in reality we are 100% in bed with them and have been for decades. And what affects us, what affects them, and what affects them affects us, vice versa. And that's why these factions and why it's become, why the divide and conquer, why it's, it's been, seemed like it's ramped up over the past 10 years, 10, 11 years. You know, with all the, we're just, we're more divided and more conquered than we've ever been. 
But where? But this didn't come out of nowhere. Where did this come out of? Well, now we're finding out. All these guys are all. All this stuff is all interconnected. Now we know why. Remember, I told you about R. Kelly. I said he's connected to somebody bigger. Now we know why they went after him and Epstein the same week, because the people he was making those videos. Remember, I told you about the. The the high level of production quality. Now we know where he got all that high level production. Well, he's he's associated with that left wing, that's more old school communist. God, that makes sense. That's why fucking Mister Commie himself, Sean Penn, is sitting there at the table with Leo and fucking Ladislaw Drone standing behind. Him. God damn, Jesus Christ! It's been staring us in the face the whole time, man. These are warring factions. They're all bad. They're all involved in human trafficking and all the rest of it. But one wants to shut the other one down so they can have total control of the game and keep it more quiet. That's, that's why Epstein's being brought down. Just like I told you, they were bringing him down so the larger thing didn't get brought down with it. That's, that, that's what's going on. Uh, it's wild. I'll... I'll, I'll have more and have put this more for you in this video. Here's a follow up to that story uh, about the shooting at the tower. Criminal case in a shooting at Moscow City Business Center runs into 49 volumes. The investigative committee of Russia completed the investigation into the shooting at Moscow City's Moscow International Business Center OKO Tower that took place in November 2017. The investigators concluded that the instigators of the conflict had been guards of a co-owner of the tower and former shareholder of Wim Bill Dan Gavril Yushvayev. Ross Vigardi's National Guard of the Russian Federation employed Dmitry Yakubson, who was shot in his stomach, and two officers of the private security firm got into injuries following the incident. One of the officers died from wounds. According to sources, the criminal case into the shooting has run through 49 volumes, whatever that means. The vic- it sounds like a lot. The victims have already got familiar with its materials. Now the materials are going to be given to the defendants in the case and their lawyers. You've got to understand this is being translated from Russian, so if the uh, sentences sound kind of broken, that's why. The high-profile shooting at Moscow City occurred, yes, we know, during the celebration of the 50th birthday of an authoritarian businessman and a former leader of the Ismaila is Malovsky organized crime group. That's it. That's the name. That's the, the group. Uh, that's the right wing faction of the Russian uh, mafia. I Z M A Y L O V S K I Y E. So they were having. Well, oh, that's interesting. So they're having a fiftieth birthday party. For someone they claim was the former leader of that organized crime group, right, former leader. All that means is that that person's probably running shit now. Uh, Dmitry Pavlov, 250 persons, including Yushvayev, who had arrived at the celebration with his guards, who were dang stannies from a sports club, Scorpion, had been invited to the party. The investigation theory is that the conflict erupted after Yushvayev had come upstairs to the restaurant and his guards had blocked the roadway to the tower in a Maybach car, Yushvayev had come in. A Maybach. Angry words were exchanged between Yushvayev's guards and guards of other persons, Vladislav Doronin. Soon after, it escalated into a shooting with that. The participants of the conflict moved to the restaurant, which caused panic among guests. One person died. Five got injuries following the shooting. Um, Special Operations Center of the Federal State U- U- T- Unitary Enterprise Okrana Dmitry Jakobson was seriously wounded in the stomach. Still, he has to move using crutches. One managed to survive getting shot in the back of the head. Jesus. Another guard, Platon Koida, died from the wounds. Now, this is interesting. This is where it gets interesting. The investigative committee of Russia concluded that the co-owner of Scorpion and the two-time world champion in kickboxing, Magomed Ismailov, who had been the head of Yushevev's guards and guard Eldar Kamadov had been the instigators of the conflict. They were accused of murder 
and illegal acquisition, transfer, sale, storage, or transportation of bearing firearms. High-profile scandal erupted during the investigation after an investigator of Moscow Central Board of the Investigative Committee of Russia, what, the, the investigator of the Central Board of the Investigative Committee? That's the kind of redundant government bureaucracy you've got in the criminal country like Russia or the United States even. Uh, of Russian Ivan Agjanian had unexpectedly changed the main investigation theory. Agajian decided the professional athletes had not been the ones who had caused the conflict, but Jakobsen and employees of the private security firm had been. So their claim is these MMA fighter guys who they said, uh, Magomed Ismailov, I looked him up. Yep, he's a fighter. Looks like a goddamn murderer. They're saying it was him that did it, right? Then the corrupt bureaucracy got in there and create, cooked up a new narrative now the narrative is the guy that actually starred the whole thing conveniently is the guy that fucking got killed. So, of course, they blame it on the dead guy. For all, for all appearances, this guy just seemed to be just a part of the, of the detail and was just responding to the threat. Well, he got, unluckily got killed, so now they pin the whole thing on him. That's terrible. And imagine what that's probably going to do to his family. Um, so the guy, so they they took the heat off the MMA fighters. They got away because, of course, the mob owns all that. They changed. Uh, they decided the professional athletes had not been the ones who caused the conflict, but Yakeson employees of the private security firm had been. Exclamation point. The latter were allegedly the first who had opened fire. The three are being accused of hooliganism. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, hooliganism was like motherfuckers to get out of control for, for football. These guys are fucking it, it murdered somebody and they're MMA fighters. So they get charged with hooliganism. That's hilarious. Gotta love that mob connections, man. The victim's defense emphasized that the new theory contradicted the examination results that had shown that Jakobson's gun had not been used at all during the shooting. So the guy that got killed that they're pinning it on didn't even fire his gun. The forensics showed that. Doesn't matter. It, no, we own this town. Moscow's prosecution service backed the lawyer's point of view. As a result, the case was given to the Central Board of the Investigative Committee of Russia. Shortly before the end of the investigation, the criminal cases against Yakovson and the officer of the private security firm were terminated due to the absence of a crime. Wow. After that, Agian and his colleagues filed their termination reports, but they were found illegal due to the fact that these kind of reports should be applied individually. I mean, wow. That's just pure and blatant criminality and corruption right there. They came in and the mob took care of all of it. You know, I wanted to see, because I thought it was interesting, again, that, that Joe Rogan was conspicuously absent at that USC event, not doing the commentator for it like he usually would. It was in New Jersey. And, uh, you know, I was already on to some of this stuff, and, I was, and then I saw them show the, you know, the Trump sons out there cheering, him, cheering on Colby Covington. He's walking out into the ring with a MAGA hat on. And then they go to his corner and the goddamn guy in his corner you think would be, you know, some American guy. Now it's a fucking Rusky, of course. And then Joe Rogan's out there and I went, hmm. You know, if there's something between this, you know, because jo Joe is Mr. UFC. You know, if there's something to this whole thing of these different factions between the left and right, you know, that are at war with each other and also very much at war with each other within something like UFC as well. I wonder if Rogan and this fucking Colby Covington guy have either A, had any interaction, B, had any beef or anything else. And uh, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I mean, it came right up. It came right up. Yeah. They, yeah, there's, there's beef between them. Though it seems that like everybody in UFC, this has apparently happened in 2018 last year. About a year ago, May 2018. Uh, though it seems like everyone in the UFC wants a piece of loudmouth Walter Wheat contender Colby Covington. 
There's one guy who most definitely does not, UFC commentator Joe Rogan. Last month on his Joe Rogan podcast, Rogan called out Covington for some of his more brash actions, like picking fights with the former UFC heavyweight champion Fabro Fabricio Wordham, or for talking trash about his college roommate, former light heavyweight champion John Jones, saying that if Covington wasn't careful, he might bite off more than he could chew. Quote, John Jones is going to be in front of you one day, said Rogan. You've got to be careful. Watch your fucking words. You're going to get slapped in the face by a guy who can kill you with his hands. That's a bad move. I get what Colby's doing. He's making a lot of noise and trying to do business. And if you fight him, you're going to make a lot of money because a lot of people are going to come and see him and get, get his ass kicked. Well, apparently Covington didn't think too much of Rogan's comments because on BJ Penn Radio last week, he said Rogan should heed his own words and his advice when it came to trash talking or else Rogan might be the one that ends up getting slapped. I think Joe Rogan should worry about what he's saying about me, because we might just meet face-to-face -face soon in the near future. I'd like to see that fight. Come on, Ruskies, make it happen. Colby Covington versus Joe Rogan. Of course, Rogan's got that bad left knee. If you ever got to fight Rogan, just take that left and just go, just, just go for a fucking straight up. Just go for that left knee first. He's done. He's done. He ain't getting back up, and he ain't walking for at least a year. So just take that fucking left. He's done. No flying side kicks for you, bub. I think Joe Rogan should worry about what he's saying about me because we might just meet face-to-face -face in the near future. He might be commentating that Chicago card. That's interesting because I noticed there was one in Chicago recently, and Joe was there at it. And they have one in New Jersey. And then Joe isn't at it. And everybody there you think would be pro-Trump. But yet they were all booing that Kobe Covington guy. You could hear it they, when he was trying to talk at the end. And normally that would be when Joe Rogan is, talk, is interviewing the guy after the fight who were one. Joe conveniently avoided that situation altogether. And why? Because of the more right-wing element of the Russian mafia was there and are, are behind. Now this all makes sense. I was like, I knew it. I mean, I, 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 I never even heard of this. I never knew there was any fight between or any beef between Covington, Cody Covington and fucking Joe Rogan. But I just, I was like, okay, he's not there. He, the, the Trump sons are there. Joe's obviously connected to the more left wing version. I mean, we talked about the stuff with Epstein, him being at the last of Ronan party with Naomi Campbell, all that. And then boom, he's not there. He wins. Normally he'd be the one interviewing him. This was all, this was all done by design. Now it all fucking makes sense. This is why you see all these different fat man. It, it's, it's mind blowing. It really is. Uh, there's a lot more to this than that. I'll, I'll do my best to put all this together in a video for you. But that's, I mean, that's the long and the short of it. I mean, I gave you a, a great deal of the of, of everything I know up to this point about this stuff. But, uh, you know, all the stuff that Obama was doing when he was in office were, were things that would inadvertently not really appear to the public going after that more right wing in. And that's why now that they've, that's his whole... Trump's whole thing about going to war at the deep state, that's bullshit. It ain't the deep state he's going after because he's in bed with the deep state just as much as anybody on the left wing is. You all know that. But the, what he really means to say when is I'm going after the deep state is I'm going after the left wing deep state side of the Russian mafia. And I'm in bed with the right wing side. I used to be with these guys, left guys over here. They fucked me over. I've, I'm now over here with these guys, the big old money Russian mafia guys that are connected to, Zion, to all the big Zionists and all the big fucking, ah, it's just insane. And now we're waging war on this side. It's unbelievable. It really is. And I've got uh, way more research and way more stuff to get into and find and uh, put together for this film, so. And listen, I got a lot more. I got more news. It's just, this is where I, I, I was going to do some more news for you here tonight. But honestly, my this is where my brain is at right now because this is what I've been working on. 
So I need to just go with this and get back to work on getting this little video out and up for you guys sometime this week. But uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, I mean, I've got this little chart that I found that somebody had made. It's like a flow chart that shows how all these Russian guys connect together. It's, 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 it's crazy. You see it, and you're like, oh, my God. Now it all makes sense to me. Makes sense why they went after Weinstein. You know, the, we, we've thought that this Me Too stuff and all this stuff coming from going towards, you know, Weinstein and going, we, 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 we've thought that this has been coming from the liberals. But that's not who this has been coming from at all. It's just like I exposed years ago with a lot of the, the uh, you know, the stuff with the CMP. They've been doing that forever. I mean, that's why they, they started throwing disinfo around around the Kennedy assassination and the rest of it. And a lot of the stuff, it's the same stuff, a lot of the stuff that I found during my research into the Kennedy assassination plays into this. It's crazy how much of, of it is so very similar. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it really is mind-blowing stuff. But, again, this is why now I'm starting, especially when I was talking about that, all that weird uh, stuff connected to Quentin Tarantino and Weinstein, why they went after these certain guys. Because they're going after these guys who have been involved in the opposing end of these two warring factions of who are not only trying to control Russia, they're trying to control well beyond that. And that's exactly why there's not going to be any war, any of this bullshit. The only war that's going to go down is going to be the people that oppose this syndicate. And that's why Iran is on the fucking to-do list. There's not, but that's why there has it. As long as these guys still get their people, the whole fall of the, you know, all the fucking, the end of communism or the end of, you know, all that fucking the end of the U.S. It's all it was all horseshit. And I suspect that that's the plan of what they want to do. I've said this for a long time with the United States as well divide us up into all these different little factions that are all controlled by that's why you, you'll have uh, I, I think they're going to break the, up, us up in a bunch of little nation state, states and you'll have some that are left wing some that are right wing and they'll all be controlled by these different factions of the Russian mafia it's it, it, it really is mind blowing And why all of a sudden, you know, because I, I remember when for a long time Jones was all about Hollywood people and he had Hollywood people on the show and all of a sudden he went against them and all of a sudden, I mean, now this explains why they did the Pizzagate thing, man, all this stuff. Fucking explains why fucking Luke Radowski from fucking uh, We Are a Change has always fucking reminded me of being Vladimir Putin's fucking son or something. I, I, I just knew that dude was some kind of rusky plant from day one, but. God, there's just so many things now. So many things. Why were they, you know, why they were so behind 9-11 Truth? Why they were so back in that? All the stuff I found that I put in Spellcasters 1, you know, I had showed you connections with Trump and Russia and all that stuff even before he got elected. I talked about the stuff with Scientology and Russia. That That's, again, explains why you've seen that thing going down. Remember I told you about why all of a sudden are they trying to expose Scientology when you weren't allowed to expose it and talk about it again? Because you've got one faction on one side that's going after the factions on the other, and these factions exist within Scientology as well. This is crazy. It really is. I love you guys. Please support our work. Make contribution. We'll, we've got the new August uh, fundraising banner up right now. Make a contribution to that. We've got our fundraiser still. We're trying to raise money to buy a new computer here so I can continue to make even better videos than I'm making now and to do them faster. And I've got a computer that's almost 10 years old and I'm trying to make three movies, two, two movies and this new mini film and all this stuff. Uh, we're trying, if you want to throw some cash towards that to help us get a new computer, that would be much appreciated too. Uh, get a subscription to the archives, 
buy some downloads from the download shop, whatever you can do. And uh, I'll be back with more this week, and I'll have a video ready ready for you as soon as I can. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.